Yeah, my name is John Hutchinson. I'm a farmer here at Hebblethwaite Hall Farm, Courtly Sebba. Uh, these are my two boys, Jack and Will, uh, and my mum and dad. And we've been here, yeah, 40 years. It's fairly high up, uh, you know, hill land, um, some high up pastures and meadowlands, yeah. If it's a dry year, it's not bad. If it's a wet year, they're wet. Uh, we tend to be on the wetter side, we can stand a, a dry summer. So we run 400 yows at Pure Swale and cross about 250, and we have about 80 chibiots north country. And a couple of blue faced Leicester yows to try and breed some tups. Yeah, all our swales were not felled basically. Uh, twins are held back a little bit, they'll go out now. Uh, but yeah, anything with a single lamb, swale the lamb up outside and go out first of May and just fetch them in now to clip and back out again. Crossings start generally about 15th of March and fell start 1st of April. Uh, alt twins, alt crossings lamb inside and alt twin fell lamb inside. And we just find it works easier. It suits our system, we, everything's tagged and ringed and done before it goes outside. Well, we're in a scheme, so they can't go out till 1st of May. So basically on 1st of May, they'll, the majority will go out. We might hold some later lambs back. Um, but yeah. yeah, generally it's a real, the bulk of the single lambs go out 1st of May. I like all our, our pure fell. The twins will go, go out to fell now, just for a bit, just to heath, give them a lamb. It's just, it just pulls the owl down a bit much if you turn them out too early. Yeah, our main part's our draft yow trade. It's something you can rely on and you you sort of know where it should be. And and uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll pull our yows off, draft yows off and, and sort them up and check they're all correct. So they're all free crop yows, our four shear. And then obviously these are our hogs to replace them. You know, we took over here. My dad bought this spot 40 years ago. Um, and you know, we took over some fairly average yows and, and to try and improve them yows, we concentrated on buying some power and some size and, and a good mouth. And, you know, put some lift into the yows and, and I'm trying to focus, you know, I think our yows have got some big tall yows and just trying to get that width back in them, which Tech's doing with, when you've got tall sheep, they're generally not as wide as a little sheep, but, you know, yes, I, I think, there's, you know, if people lose sight of carcass with a swale job, and it's, it's one of your main factors, because it goes right down the line to, to your mill gimmer and from your mill gimmer to your fat lamb, you know. We all want good carcass sheep at the end of the day. Uh, whichever point of the breed or the breeding it, it is, whether it's a fat lamb or a, a mule or, or a pure swale. So yeah, we use our Cheerwell reader to, to record all, all the births and pedigree. And so this, on the computer system, it goes back to 2009. So I can sc scan that and it tells me what its mother was or what tag number its mother was. And it was got with Summit Noble that we purchased the other year. Um, for 14,000, <laughs> uh, he's done, yeah, he's done well, he's done all right. There's a few nice hogs by him. Uh, so top shames will be going this time. Um, and yeah, we've, we've recorded all our pedigree back to the day we moved here. Uh, yeah, this sheer well makes it a lot easier than writing it in a diary in the middle of lambing time. So yeah, we, we tag everything at birth. So you've recorded its mother and what its dam is, which I put in at tupping time into my reader. I scan out the owls to each tup, and then it automatically puts it onto my reader at lambing time. Uh, yeah, I use it quite a bit. Any faults, any problems, if someone's prolapsed badly, if it does it again the next year, it goes. So yeah, it helps you, you can't always remember everything. Uh, it just gives you a reminder of stuff that, you know, that's had issues or, or anything really, um, and trying to keep better records. And you know, same as your fat lambs going out, I use it to, I can see which tubs have done better than others and which have graded out better. And so, yeah, yeah, I try and use it, I'm probably trying to use it more and more to try and make things more efficient and, and improve things really. 
Yeah, so we had great success at the, the Royal Highland Show this year, our first year showing up there. Uh, to win overall champion with our our yap two three yow, which was yeah, it was a real achievement and really filled with that. It makes this hard work pay off and you know, little things like that. And and then to, to win a ticket with everything, you know, we got second and third we our gamer hogs that we took up and and first we our clip gel that we took was yeah, it was yeah, it was brilliant. I mean it was just yeah, unreal that day. It was quite hard to take in to be honest, because you don't expect to do that well. Uh, quite you know, a competitive show and there's a lot of good sheep there. And yeah, it's it a cracking atmosphere and some really nice sheep and people there that have showed them on. The at the Great Yorkshire that was completely unexpected, uh, you know. Uh, just happened to see the picture on Facebook and I thought that looks like one of mine. <laughs> so I messaged uh, Graham. And yeah, he said it was one of mine and he'd, he'd won overall champion meal at the, the Great Yorkshire Show. Which, yeah, just, I mean, you never dream of doing that. You, we a meal, and I mean, full credit to Graham. He's a tremendous stock person to to take me meal lamb on and, and have it as big as anything there and, and compete. You know, it wasn't a, when we sold it, it was a nice, there were nice pen of lambs, but they weren't blown up by any means. Uh, they had a lot of catching up to do on, on the others that he bought. Um, yeah, no, I just, yeah, just, just didn't really expect it at all, that one. But yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah, so, so these are our hogs, and, and I don't yeah, I don't really like too much colour on our hogs on the faces, because, you know, you see there's odd one or two with very little, if nothing, above their eye. Well, you know, I, I would drop Yao is our main aim, and, and by the time the first year Yao's have, have a nice bright eye on them, the grey with age, and if you have too much colour now, by the time he, she's a four she is, she's most likely going to be grey. So, we, you know, we like our colour quite tight and pinned down on our sheep. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't mind a slightly darker hog. If it's, you know, if it's like that, it, you know, it'll make into a nice yow. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's uh, probably one of the most stressful times of year is trying to find a swale tup. Um, and generally look for, you know, we like some nice, nice white nose and nice tight round the eye, white and, you know, a nice sort, a uh, bit hard hair on it. Whether we can afford it or not, that's that's a different matter. Uh, we've focused a lot on on teeth and, and you know, it's carcass and shoulder. That's what we try and aim for, uh, you know, and some on its legs that can stand and walk. I think there's, especially when you know when you're looking at sheep going up a field, that when they've a good width behind them, you know they just look so much better than narrows. And, and same into your mules, it follows through. It wants you know some chest in it and be able to stand on its own and walk about correctly. Uh, so yeah, yeah, our main key points when looking for a top really a, a teeth and carcass and and yeah and trying to get the rest that you can afford really. It's, 